and God's blessings to all who are joining us today. Welcome to this time of worship coming to you from the Sudicum Chapel at First Lutheran Church of Nashville. Thank you for being with us. Today is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost and our sermon text is the gospel lesson for this day, the parable of the wheat and the weeds from Matthew 13. You know, it's easy to spend too much time worrying about the weeds and not enough time <clears throat> sowing good seed. So we'll talk about how we balance these two things, not only in our personal lives, but in the life of a community of faith. Today's takeaway, pulling weeds is not the church's business, but rather concentrating on growth and life. We're getting ready to launch a vacation Bible school uh, for uh, experience for children online and also a summer Bible school for adults. Our children's version will be launching soon and the adult study on some famous women of the Old Testament will begin in August. Stay tuned for more. Now, if you have received the worship pages for today, I invite you to turn there. Uh, if you do not receive them, it's easy to get on our email list by calling or emailing the church office and we'd be happy to send those to you each Friday. We'll begin with the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your Spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading for this seventh Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Isaiah, reading from the 44th chapter. There are no other gods besides God. The word of the Lord does not fail to come to pass. We can trust in God through whom Israel and we 
are redeemed. The scripture. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Here ends the first reading. Our second reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, reading from the eighth chapter. For Paul, true spirituality means that we are experiencing the reality of the Spirit, which enables us to pray as God's children, keeps us in solidarity with creation, and gives us unseen hope that God will liberate us and creation from bondage to death and decay. The scripture. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope, that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we await for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Here ends the second reading. Our Holy Gospel for today from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus tells a parable about the coexistence of good and evil in this world. God's judgment will remove all evildoers and causes of sin, but not until the end of human history. The Gospel Lesson Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, 
Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's begin with a time of Father in heaven, thank you for your presence with us here at Sudicum Chapel and in each of the homes and places where we are gathered to worship today. Let your Holy Spirit fill us with love and understanding, and may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable. In Jesus' name, amen. Minneapolis pastor Leith Aaron Anderson tells of calling Kenlaw to take care of his suburban weed-infested lawn, only to have them reject his lawn as a client because it was so bad. One member of his church volunteered to totally remove his old lawn and start a new one, an offer that he was almost ready to accept when a former farmer gave him some advice. Don't worry so much about getting rid of the weeds. Just grow the grass, and the grass will take care of the weeds. The Andersons took his prescription and did all they could to grow the, the good stuff. And after a couple of years, their lawn looked just as good as everyone else's. The Andersons had to ask themselves, what would be their primary focus? growing grass or killing weeds. Just like the householder from this week's gospel parable, the Andersons decided to concentrate on the positive, on growth, instead of pouring their time, energy, and resources into killing off weeds. Now that seems like good advice for individuals and for congregations. Taking this tack not only concentrates our energies on the positive, it safeguards us from bad judgment calls. Sometimes we would quickly suppose to be weeds, or what we would quickly suppose to be weeds, turns out to be unexpected flowers, blooms, and possibilities in our midst. Jesus' parable intentionally takes responsibility for reaping for gathering and bundling together true weeds out of human hands and makes this a task for divinely directed angels. You see, differentiating between weeds and beneficial plants is not a human responsibility. Jesus himself told us a story about not tearing out the weeds in a field for fear of disrupt, disrupting or destroying new and tender roots of the good crops all around it. You see, it's important to fertilize, not to weed kill. Don't be so quick to remove unwanted or unwelcome growth in your life. As that passage reads, these weeds are not necessarily your fault. They have been planted there by your enemy, and their main intent is to discourage you, to distract you, even to cause you to spend time and energy weeding the garden, as it were. 
Jesus here is being careful to remind us of the importance of cleansing our own lives of these weeds, these unsightly growths in the garden of our lives, but rather more importantly, continue to water your entire garden, continue to fertilize, continue to nurture and care for it. Remember, the Bible does tell us that it rains and shines on the just and the unjust, and the sun rises and sets on the evil and the good. The weeds will be removed at harvest, but they can live among you. There is a day of reckoning coming. There is a day when the weeds are separated from the wheat. The useless plants are separated from the fruitful ones. We're told several times that the chaff or the tares or the weeds of our lives will wither. They'll burn. They'll be separated from our lives in God's own way and in his own time. So we are encouraged to spend our time, our energy, our prayers, and certainly our time with the Lord on growth in your life. Give attention to the flaws and the quirks and to the bad habits and the things that distract you from a closer walk with the Lord, but be sure you are not swept up with all of that as a priority. You see, the main ears to hear piece here is the Lord is telling us that spending time and energy tearing out the weeds can damage any new growth, any tender roots that are gaining momentum in your life. Instead, spend time nurturing and caring for those tender roots through immersion in the Word, devoting time to prayer and worship, and finding ways to be of service. We press on. It is the, the keep going part of our lives that we need to hear. We don't stop and tear out any ugliness, cease forward progress until we look or feel better, halt any new growth until we can get rid of this excess baggage, this debris, these messy characteristics and traits in our lives that are unbecoming or sightly, unsightly. Rather, we, we are to keep going. Remember, in Philippians 3, we are encouraged to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, to aim for that high calling, to work toward that goal, not to stop and groom ourselves and worry about whether we appear worthy of. And of course, as I said earlier, what applies to our individual lives in Christ also applies to our life in this Christian community called First Lutheran Church. As we poise ourselves for the future, as we learn to do church in a new way, we concentrate on the positive rather than the negative. We evaluate our strengths for ministry and focus on them rather than the things that we don't do as well. We cultivate relationships with community partners and grow ministry from those relationships. In the coming weeks, you will hear more about Project Thrive as we begin this partnership with Belmont University to help us and 17 other urban congregations in Nashville to thrive in ministry, to do what we do even better. And we will learn from each other how to do ministry more effectively in this urban setting that we find ourselves. The times ahead are exciting, and we need to focus on the positive and what we can continue to accomplish in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, building his kingdom in this place where he has placed us. The parable of the wheat and the weeds imparts the truth that we live in the world and minister in the world, the wheat and the weeds together. Jesus doesn't intend the body of Christ to be a hothouse flower. It is to live in the world among the weeds, learning how to survive in the presence of of their sometimes negative impact and energy. And so today's takeaway is this. Pulling the weeds is not the church's business. 
Growing wheat, growing bread for the world, growing souls is the task of each Christian and each community of faith. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Join me in confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we come to our time of intercessory prayer. Confident of our God's care for us in the midst of the world's suffering, let us join together in the power of the Spirit to pray for the church, the earth, the world, and all who are in need, responding to the words, teach us your way, with the response, you are full of compassion. Let us pray. God of the church, we praise you for sowing the good seed of the gospel throughout the world. And we mourn that at this time, many Christians cannot assemble to nurture one another for growth in the faith. Tend your people, Support bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Give us strength through your word. Lead seminaries to plan appropriately for the fall semester. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of the nations, we praise you for the good that has been given us in this country, and we mourn that many people here are poor and dispossessed that we have allowed racism to distort our society, that violence breaks out in our land. Lead us to form communities in which all people are equal and where disputes are settled without violence. Save us from preserving a past that has been harmful to many. Bring an end to warfare around the world and mend the torn fabric of humankind with your truth and mercy. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of humankind, we praise you for wherever health and happiness prevail, and we mourn that many people suffer. Each day thousands more contract the virus. Renters are facing eviction. Medical workers are exhausted. Some of the sick have no access to health care. Countless people are broken by sorrow. Open our hearts to your children who suffer in any way and show us how to serve them. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of the seasons, we praise you for summertime and we mourn that this year many hopes and expectations are denied. Give relief to those who suffer from the heat. Protect travelers from infection. Guard our children. Give rest to those with no vacation time, hope to those who are unemployed, and patience to all who must endure this difficult time. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of healing, care for all who are in need of you, the great physician, especially Joan Cullum, Patty Cutter, David DiPercio, Ann House, Sherry Johnson, Sandra Cannon, Ruth Price, Gary Shimmer, Rita Stansel, Herman, Herma Swenson, David and Jean Tallinn, Donnelly Tuttle, Emma Jean Williams, and those we name aloud or remember in the silence of our hearts. Christina, Karen, Stephen. 
O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of the church, we pray for your people at First Lutheran. Help us to look ahead with creativity as we seek to do ministry in these unique times. Give wisdom as we plan for the future. We lift up our elected leaders on the Congregation Council as they meet this week, and also for those who are taking leadership in our refocusing process and Project Thrive. May these efforts bring a renewed awareness and commitment to your will for this place and how we can thrive as a community of faith. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of eternity, we praise you for all who have died in the faith, especially this week the apostles Mary Magdalene and James. We mourn our own beloved dead. At the end, bring us all into the shining light of your presence. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together boldly, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.